Hi guys, and welcome to episode 1 of my brand new Going Medieval series. It's been over a year since I played the closed alpha, and ever since I've been following the game closely to wait for its release. It finally released earlier today, and I'm super excited to play it and show it to you guys. So, let's get straight into it. We've got the scenario here, so we can pick between standard, peaceful and survival. I'm gonna go for standard, and I'm gonna play on normal difficulty, because I haven't played this game before properly. Like I said, I played it in the, uh, the closed alpha, but I'm assuming a lot's changed in the last year and a half to two years. So I don't want to go in with difficult, but I don't want to start too easy. So we'll go for normal. And we also get to start with different conditions. At the moment, there's only a new life or a lone wolf. Definitely not playing lone wolf. I'm going to go for the more classic, what I call the rim world experience, which is just the, the three colonists and you start with a good amount of equipment. But it seems you can also add new and create your own here. So I'm guessing maybe with workshop support, you can create your own, sorry, um, subscribe to different workshop uh, starting conditions, or maybe with updates I'll add more. But anyway, let's go with the new life. So this is new. We get to choose out of the three spots, valley, mountain, or hillside. I think I'm gonna go with valley as it seems just logically the most easy. Mountain definitely would be really hard, but I'm guessing, yeah, here we go. This is what it says. Mountain, plenty of uh, resources like gold, iron, and silver, but less fertile soil, clay vegetation. I'm assuming hillsides in between both of them. Good defense positions. And valleys in the middle. But it has less uh, gold, silver, and iron. So I'm going to go with the valley, grow a big agriculture district, and then we're going to have to probably struggle to create our own equipment but at least we'll be fine for food and probably with lots of wood to getting uh, buildings up. And now I'm just gonna customize my name, Heraldry, and I'll be back once I've got that done. Okay guys, I'm back and I've spent the last 10 minutes making and experimenting with different, uh, different methods I can make the Heraldry. Uh, I've settled with this and the reason why is I think it looks quite cool with the bow and the arrows crossing, but also think because we're settling in the forest, it makes a bit more sense to go for the green representing the forest, red representing the name Redder Wood, and then the bow and the arrows being almost like with the woodland. Um, but I've, I've, I'm looking at some of the others and the game's done really well, the developers have done really, really well with how you can actually make the heraldry with uh, different tools to play around with, lots of colours, lots of shapes. I really like what they've done here, and this is a cool little thing, and when you get the game and you guys play along as well, spending just 10 minutes, 15 minutes making the heraldry is, is quite fun and cool. And I like how that's a feature in the game. So that is everything we've done. We've got the, the map seed here, so if you guys want to play along with me, you can type in this seed, assuming they don't change. Uh, and the map size is default size, and we can't seem to change that as of this game version. So, I'm going to hit next. So, this game is similar to RimWorld as well, in the fact that you get to see the people you're um, going to start with. Unlike RimWorld, though, it doesn't seem like you can change between them, like where you start with maybe seven and you pick the best three or whatever. But you can randomize. I'm not sure if this is just their look or what they are, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit randomize. On this guy. Yeah, so it does actually fully randomize them. So, we can see some of the important things. They've got 20 smithing. Um, so the stars, I'm assuming, are the same as Rimworld, where more stars mean, yeah. So that means they'll get their skill faster. Person's got amazing smithing, but that's it. Everything else is pretty, pretty rubbish. I don't want to play around with this too much, because I want to just play the game and get straight into it. And I don't really know enough about the game to to say how important each skill is like obviously I can assume if it's got one in marksman they're probably not gonna be very good at using ranged weapons but I don't know if I want to change it too much and just go with what we've got I'll, I'll have a I'll have a little look and play around until I get something I like okay so we played around for a little bit and I'm happy with who I've got we've got Harold who's a great melee fighter 19 melee skill is exceptional uh, but again lacking in almost everything else apart from mining we've got Roderick who's got some passions for mining smithing and culinary so that's great because he can do the mining and then smith uh, the gear uh, the sort of the ore and everything he's got into equipment and also with culinary that's got someone to cook our food but again rubbish um, a few things like animal handling and construction but actually he's average on quite a few other things and we've got Kinna here who's really good at smithing so they can do actually all the smithing again really good at mining so mm, 
Got quite a lot of miners, but that's okay. Uh, carpentry. They've got some passions for. Speechcraft. Uh, and marksman. So nobody here who's actually an exceptionally good settler. But good enough for me. So I'm going to continue. Here we go. So this is the last screen we will face. Just making sure we're happy with everything we've got. And yeah, I am happy. Uh, I'm going to click show tutorial tips. And we're going to embark on our adventure. So you can see by reading this, guys, that uh, a plague has caused the death of many, many people. And we're in the British Isles. It's years 1353. We've got our three adventurers. And we set off into the wilderness to try and create our own uh, future. Whether making a settlement and just trying to survive out there. Um, and Roderick apparently is confident, defiant even, uh, about taking the, the land and building what we want. And after many travels... Or travails, I should say. They arrived in a valley with golden plains cut through by a snaking river. For Kinna, it conjured visions of bountiful harvest, song and wine. A place to put down roots. A homeland. They decided to title it Redwood. So before I go, I want to say, if you haven't watched my Amir or Ostrich series, you, you won't know, but Redwood is the name I pick for everything. And it's going to stay like that. So Redwood Village. Let's go. Okay, so we're in, and wow, I really do like the graphics. I love the art style that they've gone with. Um, I'm going to quickly pause the game, though, um, and I'm going to get started. Like I say, I haven't played this game in ages. I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but I've got some experience with survival games like RimWorld, so I've got a rough idea of what I want to do. Um, but with the game particular UI and everything I need to look out for, this is a first, like I'm assuming it's a first for you if you're also watching this in the, the first few weeks. Where I do like this game a lot more than RimWorld is how it's 3D and how you can go down layers. That is amazing. Making cool castles or living in like a cave, um, making big walls, forts, uh, like build, just buildings in general. You just don't have that in RimWorld. So I'm really, really excited to, to get making cool structures in this. So what I want to do first is... I want to just get some simple structures down. I don't know how often we're going to get attacked. And I don't know how severe the attacks are going to be. I'm going to assume the worst and assume we're going to get attacked every couple days, every few days. And the attacks are going to be strong. So I want to get a house down, like a little hall, get some uh, particular buildings down, such as like a smithy. And then try and get some walls around. But I don't know how quick we can, we can get that all done. At least I'm going to try and get it done quite quickly. So, I have set for a few bushes uh, to be harvested and some of the nearby trees in this area to be chopped down because I'm happy to set where we are. There, there doesn't really seem to be any particularly good defensive locations. Um, so, just on this flatland is where we're going to have to settle. Uh, I'm assuming there's some sort of zone. Yeah, here we go. Default stockpile. So, I'm going to get a stockpile down, um, warfare, dumping, and just normal. So, we'll get, we'll get the dumping one just here and... We'll get a, a more proper one here. Yeah, it does it, that does it all for us. Untick waste here. And we'll unpause the game and... Am I going to need to set schedule? Yeah, here we go. So, just like in Rimmel, we've got a schedule here. Work, sleep, anything, leisure. Um, I'm going to keep that how it is. Running just three people, I don't see a problem in changing that. Jobs. Now this is what I was interested in. I'm going to unclick that and pause the game again. This is what is important. This is setting who prioritizes what, who does what job first. So I'm going to have a play around with this, get that set up to how I like it, and then I'll be back, guys. Okay, so I've set the jobs. Um, and actually, looking through, I found that there's my colonists are better than I thought they would be. A lot of them actually have 9 and 10 skills where I wouldn't think they did. Like for example, growing, we actually got some good botany skills. Uh, and construction, we have a 9 level constructor, which I, I didn't think we did. So I'm happy with who we've got actually. And I've got this all organised. Uh, if you know 1 being the highest priority uh, and 5 being the last. And also it goes from left to right. So for example, the uh, settlers will tend to people first if it's a 1. Before they'll tend to a one on hauling or steward. That's if you're not familiar with how that uh, job system works. Um, I think that's almost all done. This is a new menu, manage, which items your settlers will auto. So this is interesting. 
This is much better than RimWorld, so we can actually set what weapons they auto-equip, shields, headgear. I really like this. So it seems like the developers have really put a, taken things from RimWorld that weren't really covered in great detail, such as the manage armor section, and they've added it into the game. I'm really pleased. So now we've set the jobs. Uh, the people who are good at harvesting will actually harvest first, and then the others will maybe haul, haul goods. Okay, I know about forbidding and allowing from, from RimWorld. So yeah, as you can see, I'm basically a lot of my knowledge from RimWorld, because that's the most uh, I'm experienced with when it comes to like survival management games. But we're already starting to store, store food and goods. I'm going to speed up the game. Bring this in. So there's a temperature, there's an, a game hour. This is cool. Okay, so we're starting to clear this area of the trees, like I said, uh, and they're harvesting all the all the all the food, and they've actually done that. So now, I'm going to start getting construction of the little house done. We've only got one constructor, which is Harold. Um, so while the others are doing the other other tasks, I can get him working. So I'm going to get into that with a a simple house. I'm going to get made first, and we can add more houses. We can even add a second floor and more stuff later. Uh, I'm going to keep it as like a little dormitory for now because you can see not enough beds. So I want to put everybody's beds in this just straight away for the first night. It takes quite a lot of wood. It's five wood per, per wall. We'll make it. Make it a small house just for now, just so we can get it completed for the first night. Wooden windows in. Okay, there's some wooden windows and wooden floor. Finally, a thatched roof. So we can't support a thatched roof that big. Oh no, we can. It's just because there's an empty, empty part. There we go. Door. There we go. So, a very simple little house. Good enough for the first uh, few days. Just while we get our stuff settled, uh, we get our beds up, crafting bench up, all of that. So, that's done, yeah. Already, I absolutely just love the 3D style. Really, really like it. And I just love the graphics. And I've already said, but they're better than they were before when I played in the uh, alpha test. Okay, so Harold's getting started. Settlers are idle, so I'm going to give them more jobs. More harvesting of, uh, here we go, harvesting of the, the wheat over here so we can get more, more thatch. Another little thing I like is how you can actually see the XP when they, uh, when they do stuff. So for example, he's getting 9 XP for constructing these flooring tiles uh, towards construction. Another little improvement from Remold. I can just see the game is in early access and I, and I, I see promos with the developers. Loads of small little touches that they've improved on from similar games like Rimworld. And there we go. The house is complete. Very small house that will uh, be fit for definitely the first few days. But one thing I've got to do was to uh, assign the villagers the gear we start with. So it seems we've got a shield, a chest plate, two bows, uh, a spear, and a sword. So definitely having Harold as our melee guy. So he's going to be using the spear. Uh, sorry, the shield and the chest plate. And I'll either have a think between the sword or the spear. Um, but the other two will have to go the longbow. Well, actually, no, they don't because we're going to have a secondary uh, melee weapon. So let's see. 
So Harold, I'm gonna. So Harold's got the Gamson on. Um, I'm gonna quickly have a look at the other colonists to see. Um, melee eight, melee seven. So actually, they haven't got terrible melee. In fact, they've got better melee than they have marksmanship. Okay, I'm gonna get Roderick to have the shield, the shield and sword, and I'm gonna get Kinna to have the longbow because Kinna does still have better melee, but she has a point in marksman, so she will level up faster. There we go. Got a longbow and a good short bow. Level five marksman. There we go. So actually, this longbow. We can't use just yet. You need a level 10 marksman skill. And then just equip Harold with the spear. Settlers are exhausted. So we didn't manage to get beds made in time. Okay. So by holding control needs in the middle mouse button, we can actually uh, change the layers. So I can now see inside the house and I'm going to try and quickly get some hay sleeping spots set up. We can see if they'll get built in time. <laughs> no, they're all exhausted. <laughs> they've, all, they've all just literally collapsed. But we can get them ready for the second night. The first day, we've unlocked a steam achievement. Survived the first day. Excellent. So, we are ready now to continue with some, uh, some of the more advanced tasks. We've got the house up. We've got the beds in place. Now I want to look about trying to get more... Uh, more things done, such as getting a campfire up, research table up, butchering table, looking at some of these the early production builders, early production uh, facilities we can create. So, the sun is rising. It looks like it's only five hours into the day and it's already sunny. Well, four hours into the day. Everybody's woken up at five. They're going to eat some food and then get on with their tasks. I'm not really sure what their tasks are. Apparently these are all forbidden, so if we come to here and forbid these, we want them in the stockpile. So that everyone does have tasks to do, but trying to find meaningful tasks, not really sure, because only Harold can do construction. Seems most of our tasks are going to be construction at the moment anyway. Okay, meal preparation missing. So I'm assuming that means a campfire and butchering table. So I'm going to get a campfire built outside. And I'm thinking about getting a little butchering sort of building set up to do all our cooking and butchering later on. But I'm not sure if we have enough, enough time to get that built today. But I'll, I'll try. So, here's another little house constructed. Um, this one is going to be, like I said, our dormitory sort of house with basic uh, chests and, and our beds. Um, and this is going to be more of like a food preparation house, which later on we can use for, for food storage. I'm not sure how food storage works in this game, because obviously in RimWorld you've got the refrigeration units, but <laughs> there's no refrigerators as far as I'm aware in medieval times. So... We can't do that. Maybe you have to get like salt and salts, like certain foods, like the meats, uh, or you can just store it and it doesn't rot. I don't know. But I'm building this just in case we do need to store it in a particular, particular area. So I've set products and meal here um, until you have so until you have uh, six meals, let's say. So Roderick, our cook, is going to work here. Uh, cooking the food and like the berries and the grain we we harvest Getting that set up. So that's great. So that's now a useful task for Roderick to do. Harold's off constructing. Kinner is chopping down trees For wood for these new buildings. So everybody's busy doing something. I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up the time So, Harold has speedily got this new little building done. Um, 
and we've got plenty of time left in the day. Uh, so I've got research table missing, that's popped up. Uh, and we've sort of not too much for our people to do. We're cooking the food, we don't need anything else constructed. A basic research table will definitely be of use if we can get some researchers uh, ready now. So I'm going to get the research table placed in our, our main area. And I'm also going to get a backgammon table over here as well. We've got leisure, um, fulfilled, and we've got our research table here. So this is just a small little building and now it seems to be almost full. We could maybe try and get a table in, but don't want to block off all our, all our stuff. I can get a torch here though. So the torch actually output heat. So heat is something in this game you need to think about. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to get the torch there and I'm going to get some torches on these out, outside buildings. So I have got Kinna on construction. If we have a look at the jobs. She is a four. But making these small little things isn't a problem with Harold's doing other stuff. So we've now got the research table up. We now have access to this whole research tree and wow there's, there's more than I thought that'd be in this uh, stage of the game so we've got architecture which is the first one we have to unlock but then it opens up everything we need wooden weaponry smelting stone blocks clay brick making agriculture tailoring so all the stuff we need weaponry food uh, and clothes as well as better building materials it's all in the research we all need to get it so definitely want to get on with architecture straight away. And we're going to have, who's our researcher? We've got it as Roderick. And I'm going to set it to a three for Harold. But Kin has zero, so there's no point even having her ever do it. It'd just be a waste of time. So with this building now in place, I'm going to get a butchering table set up. And then a small stockpile of food in here as well. Okay, so we've got the stockpile set. Default stockpile 2. I'm going to call this the granary. There we go. So this one's set. And I'm going to tell these guys to not store stuff in this one. If I can. I can't seem to click on it. No, well, let me click on it. Never mind. So with the butcher shop open. Products raw meat i'm gonna say forever not enough research uh, resources sorry that's fine we don't need to put anything just yet but are there any animals nearby we have rabbits we have deer yeah let's go hunt some deer so actually we could get a wooden wall up but it's so expensive my gosh like just for this wall here which is a small wall that's 200 wood I was hoping it would be a bit cheaper than that but mm, I'll have to have a think how much wood do we do we have is there a way to check oh here 328 so actually we could yeah we chop down more trees I hope the trees grow back uh, otherwise we're going to run out quite quickly, but we'll chop down more trees. I'm going to get a few more buildings constructed in this small little inner, inner part of the village. And then I may get some walls built around and we can try and expand, expand later on. So anyway guys, I'm going to end the episode there. It's been a reasonably long episode we've just got the start of the game done and that's why i wanted to cut it here because i wanted to start the episode off uh, showing what the game offers with like their starting position and getting our just first basic buildings up and basic production points up and we've done that i'm really excited to continue i've been really enjoying it so far really interested to see what this game has to offer uh, and if you are too then like the video and subscribe to get notified when these videos are released 
Uh, and if you're enjoying this sort of game, you may enjoy my Ostrich series, which has a similar sort of style. The only thing it's missing is the war part. But if you're enjoying just like the jobs and the buildings and watching the, the village grow, then check out that series as well. I've done quite a few episodes on that. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'd love to see you back for uh, the rest of the series when I continue this. Uh, if you do enjoy the the game and you want to ask some comments about it or you have played the game lots and you want to give me some advice please leave comments down below i love to read them and if you offer something useful i'll definitely implement it for the videos to come so guys i'll see you in episode two